At this point, it's fair to say that there are two types of people in this world. There are people who love Taylor Swift and will pay any price to go to one of her concerts, and then there's people who deny it. But it's just like that old McDonald's joke. Like, everybody hates McDonald's, but they have like billions of people served and are like one of the most popular fast food chains in the world. So somebody's lying. Now, I'm not gonna lie today. I fully enjoy and respect Taylor Swift, and I'm super excited that she has released her 1989 Taylor's version because that was my favorite Taylor Swift album back in 2014 when it was released. But one of the things that I really respect about Taylor Swift is her advocacy for the rights of artists and musicians and for the value of songwriters and recorded music. And all throughout her career, we see that happening. Not only was 1989 kind of a metamorphosis for her as an artist, but it was also an opportunity for her to make a stand on this as the streaming world was starting to take flight and artists were beginning to get paid like beans in comparison to the amount of money that they made on recorded music. She stood up and fought Apple Music with the release of this album in 2014 and did not release the album on Apple Music because she believed that they weren't paying and compensating our artists fairly. They backed down and changed their policies and eventually she released her album on that platform. But in a lot of ways, her career is mirrored by a career of an artist like the Goo Goo Dolls. And they were unpopular when they first started in the 80s, and then they kind of went through a metamorphosis, but on their way, they signed some really bad contracts. And on their biggest album ever, Dizzy Up the Girl, their inflection point with hit songs like Iris and Black Balloon and Slide and Broadway. I remember watching a VH1 behind the music and they basically explained their career had gone downhill financially at their largest point. Taylor Swift was doing something completely different. At her most impactful moment as an artist, she was fighting some of these record labels and some of these distribution platforms to make sure that they were compensating herself and other artists fairly, and she won. So fast forward to 2019 when Scott Porchetta and Scooter Braun bought Big Machine Label Group and the rights to all of her masters and recordings right out from under her, kind of taking away her ability to have control over her own art. Since then, she's been working on re-releasing all of her first six albums so that she can own these albums. And again, fighting for ownership of her own music and setting a precedent and an example for all of us musicians who are out there trying to do the best we can to make music a career. It's one of the hardest things to do and she's teaching us kind of how to do it. Well, these are all reasons why I really respect Taylor Swift. Now, getting into the actual album itself, 1989, I love this album and I will openly confess that I've probably heard this record a thousand times. It's one of those iconic albums that kind of like defines an artist and defines the generation of Swifties that are following after Taylor Swift. I think a lot of her biggest hits are on this album. And for me, my favorite track is Out of the Woods. And it sounds just as good, if not better, on this re-release than it did on the original. There's some textures and some things that are slightly different. There were some like delays and stuff like that in the first version that are not present actually in this new one. And then we got five unreleased tracks from her vault, I guess. Five songs that she wrote with Jack Antonoff back in the days of 1989. Some people are speculating like, could these songs be about Harry Styles? Could they whatever? But a lot of times people are like taking someone's complex life and making it very simplistic. Like everything has to be a nod to something that we know about, right? Like there's so much complexity to what she's going through in these songs and these relationships that like I have no doubt they're not about Harry Styles or anything like that. Anyway, it's cool to have five new songs from Taylor Swift on this record as well. So I just want to say like I totally respect Taylor Swift for the approach that she's taken to her career, to her music, everything from like changing her style to appeal to a wider audience to doing so at the same time fighting for the the rights of musicians and uh, empowering us all. So if you love and appreciate music for all that it is and the artists who create these things, I would suggest you start collecting vinyls because vinyls are the best way to show the appreciation to the artist. You're actually purchasing the music. They get a larger cut from that sale than they do from like 300 of your streams and you get to own the music and have it tangibly. Now, hold on a second. Like this. I got this at Target today. You can get this album kind of anywhere. And uh, many of my favorite bands, when they release records, like you cannot find them at Target. You have to get the pre-release or you might not even be able to get it from your local record store because, listen, I listen to weird stuff, but you could probably buy this just about anywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if you found this at a local CVS, but I would buy this and support this artist because Taylor is fighting for the rights of musicians. She's fighting for fair pay for people who give their heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into the art that they do. And I wanna say thank you and I support you by buying this record and you should too. We like this. It's good. Bye everybody.